we are ready as a civilization and as a species to take a radically new approach to answering one of the most ancient questions we have had, are we alone? Okay, hear me out. You know those TV shows like The Big Brother, Love Island, and things like that, right? Shows where people are living in a contained space, limited by walls or by nature or whatever, and they're constantly monitored by cameras, 24-7, cameras everywhere, live streamed on TV, and even on special channels where you can choose the camera you want to watch for your own personal entertainment. They eat, sleep, play, discuss, fight, live their life somehow all under the constant recording of cameras around. You can't fart on the sofa that the camera and the microphone have already recorded it and is on some YouTube compilation getting millions of views. Now, imagine that instead of just a bunch of people closed in a house, there are 7.5 billion people, all under constant monitor of a different type of camera. Maybe for entertainment, maybe for science, maybe for both. And not controlled by humans, but by an alien race from outside our galaxy. Although it sounds like a crazy theory, there are actually scientists and astronomers that firmly believe in a theory based on the Fermi paradox, called the Zoo Hypothesis. Hello everyone, and I welcome you all to a new episode of Odd Curiosities. I'm Dom, your host, and today we're going to talk about the Fermi paradox and the Zoo Hypothesis. The Zoo Hypothesis assumes, first, that wherever the conditions are such that life can exist and evolve, it will, and secondly, there are many places where life can exist. About the Fermi Paradox, as some of you already know, it can be summed up in a single question. It's a big universe, so we, why can't we see life anywhere but here on Earth? Or put it in a simple words. If the universe is like a beach and a grain of sand is like our planet, there is a high possibility that between the billion of sand grains, there are all the ones with life on it. Now, let's say that the Fermi paradox is true, and I do believe it is. The time between the first civilization within the Milky Way and all subsequent civilization could be enormous. There might be a civilization, or more than one, out there that is hundreds of thousands of years ahead of us. To put it in simple words, out there, there might be someone that would think our technology is as old as the invention of the fire for us. Let's imagine that this hyper-advanced civilization came to visit us thousands of years ago and so that we were not ready to embrace the news. For what I know, we are not ready yet. Imagine you are watching this video and news pops up telling you that we are being invaded by aliens with a superior intelligence that will blow your mind and that our life is a complete illusion and we are eternal beings with a universal and infinite consciousness. For sure you won't go get up to go to work tomorrow morning, nor to school. You'd probably spend your time reevaluating your life choices and having a panic attack. Anyway, Imagine that this civilization came to visit us and saw that we were not ready. So they decided to keep watching us without interfere, waiting patiently for the right time to reveal themselves. They could have set up cameras on the moon, for example, or on one of the Earth's close friends, like Cretney, a quasi-satellite, an object in co-orbital uh, co configuration with Earth. It is 5 kilometers, 3 miles more or less wide, so it's not that big. And it's the closest asteroid orbiting the Sun that crossed Earth or orbit. Now there is an organization called Messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence, or METI for short. This group comprises of many scientists, and they get together to discuss the possibility of contacting aliens, or us being watched over by aliens. On their website, the first thing you'll see is a statement that says METI 
doesn't rule out the possibility of life outside of Earth. If you scroll down, you'll see the list of objectives, and the first one goes like this. To conduct scientific research and educational programs in messaging extraterrestrial intelligence and their search for extraterrestrial intelligence. They also discuss the Fermi paradox and something similar called the Drake equa 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 equation, equation, the Drake equation, I said it, which takes into account the size and the age of the universe and what might be in it. These people are not conspiracy theorists getting high in parents' basements, they are scientists. The president of METI is Douglas Pakok, and he is rena renewed astrobiologist. This science is concerned with the evolution of the universe. For a long time, he's been working on interstellar messaging, but he's also well aware that human senses might not exactly work with alien senses. Even if we could send a message to other galaxies, if we say, How do you do, fellow kids? What? It might not work out. In fact, one of the latest blogs on the METI website asks if human language is any way to try and connect with aliens. The writer asks, is it a good way to send information to beings who are likely to be very different from us, whose bodies, sensory capabilities, cognition, environment and experiences might be very different from our own? Then if we send out a message in human language form, which language? She states that while the Voyager disc, which is aboard NASA's famous Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 spacecrafts, I have lots of information on it in 55 languages. We might better try and communicate in signs and shapes and symbols and numbers. Maybe fractals? Shapes create through mathematical equations. That could be an idea. Anyway, those scientists at METI often discuss something called the Great Silence, which relates to the question of why do those galactic zookeepers keep out of, your, of our face? Well, it's like we said before, if aliens are that superior in intelligence, if they came in contact with us, that mess with our heads. In 2018, at the METI meeting, they talk about the idea of us being quarantined by aliens. One researcher at METI explained this saying, it seems likely that extraterrestrials are imposing a galactic quarantine because they realize it will be culturally disruptive for us to learn about them. Some other scientists at METI also said that we haven't developed full cognitive abilities yet, that there might be another level of consciousness in our evolution. The famous now deceased Terence McKenna believed that certain psychedelics could provide a glimpse of what was possible in terms of developing a higher consciousness. He once said, the idea of aliens coming down in a metal ship is totally preposterous. He believed alien life could already be here and they might actually be in psilocybin mushrooms, hidden in the very atoms of the things. He said those mushrooms are disguised as drug, but might really be aliens. They are here according to him, but we just don't know yet. This might sound crazy to you, but serious scientists are now talking about how the mind-blowing sub substance dimethyltryptamine, dimethyltryptamine, dimet dimethyltryptamine, DMT in short, which takes people to places that are out of this world. Yeah, a lot of people visit aliens on their colorful trips. Research has shown that some people are absolutely convinced that they saw aliens. This is why scientists at John Hopkins have been studying those breakthrough trips. More scientific research has been found in the US that is taking seriously the possibility of DMT shooting people to another universe. In the mind way, of course. I'm not saying this is proof that aliens are among us and we are being watched by them, but it's interesting that scientists taking DMT so seriously as of late. Then there is this theory. Maybe millions of years ago, aliens detected life on a blue planet, the one we call home. They thought, hmm, let's send some signal to that place and see what happened. But let's just say that vampire squids and Gojirasaurus weren't up for the chat. 
we haven't evolved yet. We pretty much spend most of our time fighting, eating, procreating and pooping. The aliens had to wait. So what did they do next? They sent a probe here and bugged the rock. Why? Because they wanted to keep an eye on us. And we're back to the zoo theory thing. The rock they bugged though was what is called a co-orbital, meaning it flies around the Earth. If you want a good view of the Earth, there is not much point in bugging the rock on the planet. A researcher named James Benford, who is also part of the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence group, came up with this idea. Why does he think that? Well, it's not that it's certain, but that it will make sense. What he's saying is why not go check some of those core orbitals and see if any of them have been bugged. Another researcher wrote, if it costs very little to go take a look, why not? Even if we don't find ET, we might find something interesting. The closest one is about 38 times further away from Earth than the Moon. We call it the Earth's closest companion, and NASA said that it's not going anywhere. That's why some people are saying we need to do some more extraterrestrial archaeology. Start digging NASA, because there might be a chance that we are part of an alien-led surveillance state. You might think that it's very hard to send a spacecraft that far, but from what we can see it's not that hard. In fact, China said it will send a spacecraft to Earth's closest companion in 2024. The spaceship will be equipped with robots that will do a bit of digging around. Maybe they'll come back with some bugs and blow our minds. But if there isn't a trade war still going on, you can expect the Chinese not to share the spoils. If in 2025 China suddenly starts speaking alien, you know how it happened. Some of those researchers really do think that those space rocks might be bugged, and they are the best chance we have of finding out if we are in a space zoo. One scientist said, if we don't find anything, that means no one has come to look at the life of Earth for over billions of years. That's a big surprise, a stunning thing. When you consider what we have done over our 10,000 plus years of being fairly civilized, imagine what a species could do given a million of years. Imagine what we would be capable of in a million years. Yes, we'll be all over the universe. There are things we'll achieve that we can't possibly imagine now. Imagine telling a guy in the Dark Ages about a show you watch online called Odd Curiosities. He could not possibly envision the future, and neither can we. With that in mind, maybe a super civilization did visit us a long time ago. Maybe we are just slow to get out of the area. The idea of super civilized space people has been embraced by a lot of our greatest scientists. Carl Sagan was one of those scientists, for example, and one of his famous quotes is, the universe is a pretty big place. If it's just us, seems like an awful waste of space. So when you look up in the sky, just imagine someone has been watching us evolve. The big brother, who's been around for millions and millions of years, saw us crawl out of the swamp. They watched us as we stood up and evolved through thousands of years. They must have loved that. Then they witnessed endless wars as we struggled to fight over land or which religion, religion was the best. They were astounded when we built bombs that could destroy the entire planet. They knew who killed JFK and why those guards were sleeping when Mr. Epstein ran out of air. They are confounded by Donald Trump's Twitter feed and they are keeping an eye on you right now as you get to the end of this episode. I might also add that while it's very plausible that aliens exist and are watching us in terms of scientific proofs, well, that's yet to come. We arrive at the end of this episode of Odd Curiosities. Thank you all for watching and supporting my work. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, and if you haven't done it yet, click the subscribe and the bell button so you can be notified of new videos coming up next and you show your support my work. If you really want to go a step ahead with the support, you can buy me a coffee. I'll leave the link in the description. Meanwhile, thank you to all the people that are already supporting me. You are the best. Stay healthy and safe, people, and arrivederci al prossimo episodio. Ciao!